Hello and welcome to NoCap Game Design. When we talk about gameplay, we typically think of the action affordances of a game, the shooting or moving or action verbs available in game. But an important aspect in most games is menuing. Now, most people don't think of menuing as gameplay or even enjoyable, but it doesn't have to be this way. Today, I ask the question, how do game designers make menuing fun? Specifically, how do the developers of the Valkyria Chronicles make the headquarters menu enjoyable? But first, who cares? Menus are the boring parts of games. Why don't designers try to minimize menus and maximize actions? And this is a valid question. Some games cut out menus altogether. Halo is a prime example. Not once will the Master Chief ever be pulled out of the world and forced to read a game menu. But this doesn't work for every game. Ultimately, game menus are pure, concentrated information, and sometimes there's a lot of information that you need to convey to a player. A menu is an effective way to expose it. And in the Valkyria Chronicles, the developers extensively use menus. In episode one of this series, I talked about the book format of the game. Like I said, I talked about this in episode one, so I won't dwell on it here. Go check it out if you're curious, link in the top right. But to summarize, the storybook menu is good design because it is easy for a new player to understand, people should be familiar with books, and it's more rich than a simple user interface overlay. This second point is the one I wanna talk about now. How can developers make menus more fun? Well, make them more rich and engaging. Here in the headquarters menu, Yes, it has a UI overlay, but it also has unique music and a unique background image. It feels like the player has stepped away from combat for a few moments and is in the peaceful city of Randgris. Clicking into one of the submenus brings the player to yet another totally different space. The training field has barracks in the background and a drill sergeant yelling at you. Welcome to your worst nightmare. The research and development area has sounds of hammers in the background and another unique image. But it's not just the sound effects nor the background picture that makes a menu rich. Notice, the training field's menu is a blackboard. This is unique and cool. A player can imagine themselves drafting up battlefield tactics here. Even the headquarters parent menu is a signpost, like a player is downtown trying to figure out how to get to the command room. All of these elements build together to make a player feel like they are actually doing something. Walking downtown or reading a book, for example. Then, it'll be much more enjoyable than just clicking through a simple menu. But cool graphics and sound effects can only get you so far. The next design technique the developers use to make the menus more enjoyable is characters with strong personalities. Now, this is not intuitive. When people think of menus, they don't often think of characters. When in a menu, no one is speaking and the game kind of pauses, but oftentimes menus are tied to characters. In-game shops or quests or party adjustments or fast travel, the list goes on, oftentimes requires talking to a person or thing in game. The devs lean into that pattern here. Almost every sub-menu has a character mascot, a person that greets the player and represents the area. Every time the player does something in the area, the mascot responds with some kind of remark. This is good design because humans like talking to other humans. It's just how our brains are hardwired. Now, these non-player characters aren't alive, but they approximate humans, and it's much more enjoyable to interact with this guy. You hear me, maggots? Any of you think he's better than the rest of the team? Go home now! Then a cold, unresponsive menu. But that's not the end of the analysis here. Let's talk about character design. What kind of characters should you put in charge of these menus? In a word, exaggerated characters. Generally speaking, most characters in a game should have exaggerated features or personalities. That's just good character design. At the end of the day, they're not supposed to be realistic, they're supposed to be entertaining. But these characters specifically that oversee the menus need to turn that up to 11. Another way to think about this, a character's personality should be inversely proportional to the amount of screen time they have. For main characters that have a lot of screen time, deep, complex, and conflicting personality traits are good. But for these menu mascot characters who only get a few seconds of screen time per hour of gameplay, they only have, well, a few seconds to make an impression. For example, this drill instructor is always yelling insults, he's got an eye patch, and he's got this unique twirl animation. 
Leon from Research and Development says bro in every sentence and absolutely adores Welkin, one of the main characters. Lieutenant, you're good people. You get all my respect and then some, bro. This is good character design. So how else can you make the menus more exciting? Add overly exaggerated characters and don't be afraid to turn it up. It's hard to go overboard here. <laughs> Sorry about him, Lieutenant. He's like this all the time, I'm afraid. The last design technique for making more exciting menus is give the player a reason to be in the menu. Tie rewards and bonuses to the menus. Now, this is a common game design technique, but it's still important and therefore worth pointing out. If you want a user to do something, then reward them for doing it. The alternative way to think about this game design principle is that you should cut any menu items that don't provide utility for a player. If there's no reason for a player to ever push a given button, then maybe you should remove that button. But let's talk about rewards, that sounds like more fun. What kinds of rewards can the developers of Valkyria Chronicles use to entice a player to spend half an hour or so in the menus? Well, simply put, upgrades. At the end of each mission, the player earns DCT, which is money, and experience points. Effectively, these are the two types of in-game currencies the players can use to make their units stronger. I'm not going to get into the power scaling scheme of this game right now. I'll talk about that in a future episode when it becomes more relevant, but for now, it's enough to know that the player's reward is more effective and potent units. And not only are the individual characters more powerful, but new affordances or player actions can be unlocked too. You can make different weapons, you can earn different commands, you can upgrade the tank. All of this added complexity is slowly doled out to the player when they're ready for it. Being handed a new toy or upgrading an existing tool is fun. People love new things and players love it when their favorite tool gets better. This is the reward. Players will associate this menu section with upgrades and new content, which ultimately tricks them into liking the menu. For the experienced developers in the audience, you might recognize as a bit of a chicken and egg problem here. Did the developers use the upgrades to make the menus more enjoyable? Or did they use the menus to make the upgrades easier to understand? I can't really imagine an upgrade scheme or item shop that isn't some kind of UI menu, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. For the sake of this video, the lesson learned is this. If you give the player a benefit for being in the menu, like a reward or an opportunity to spend resources, then the player will associate the menu with fun and therefore enjoy it more. One last point on this technique, notice the developers here introduce this HQ menu after level 3, after about 2 hours of playtime into the game. This is partly because they don't want to overwhelm a new player, the first hour of gameplay or so should be, well, gameplay and not menuing, but this also gives a player a chance to build up a bit of a purse before their first shopping trip. I've got three operations worth of DCT and EXP, and I ended up spending almost every penny of it. So the developers are using these menus to distribute rewards to the players, but the first time the player uses the menu, the reward is fairly large. A big first impression on the player will go a long way. If the player thinks, everything was really expensive, or the reward wasn't really worth it, then they probably won't be back. Here, the developers have set it up so the first time in the HQ is memorable and enjoyable. The player has extra cash to spend, and all the character introductions are entertaining. This is good design, and I think most players have a positive opinion of the HQ. Which is no small feat. Creating enjoyable menus is impressive. To quickly summarize what was discussed today, here, the developers of the Valkyria Chronicles have designed a very lean, information-dense, and engaging menu system that allows a player to unlock affordances and upgrade their tools. Specifically, the menu does a good job of hiding the fact that it's a menu and instead features side characters that have exaggerated personalities and memorable isms or catchphrases. But the real driving force is that the menu is tied directly to rewards and upgrades that make a noticeable impact on gameplay. First time impressions are also important, so the developers loaded up the player with resources and set them free for a veritable shopping spree. All this leads to a good time and enjoyable menuing, a rare and impressive compliment that most games will never achieve. If you've watched this entire video, thank you. 
please consider subscribing. I promise I also talk about more, let's say, entertaining parts of game design than just menu design. In the next episode, we get back to combat operations and start to manage some much larger, more complicated battlefields. I'll see you there. Good work, maggots! You're one level closer to human! <laughs>